Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel again this week, where in today's video, we're going to be talking about the topic of car ownership or lack thereof by 2030. In fact, if we look at a couple of these articles here, you've probably seen a lot of this for yourself. Why 95% of your driving won't be in your own car by 2030. So we've seen everything from this all the way through to these sort of tactics. Could there be an easy way to discourage people from buying cars? And they did all these surveys and they use a lot of psychologists and other people to find ways to discourage people from owning their own car. So they found by doing this, this study and actually providing information to, here it is, change consumer behavior to impact environmental policy. They estimated that only three out of five people would still choose to purchase a car. So I guess the question now then is, how exactly did we get here? And I wanna build a case today around everything that's going on right now, because we have the phasing out of petrol and diesel vehicles. We have the phasing out of heavy goods vehicles that, are go that run on diesel by 2040. We have the banning of cars and vehicles from certain parts of cities. We have all of these charges now, we have these um, clean air charges and zones. We have insurance premiums up by as much as 70% this year for some UK drivers. We have new taxes being levied and we have these new speed limits that are coming to the motorways, although we know that they've been here a long time. If you've driven up the UK, any motorway, you'll notice these speed limits, 50, 60 miles per hour. And I've been saying for over 10 years now, so over a decade, I've been saying, what is this? This is obviously intentional because you might drive five or 10 miles one day and you're like, there's one guy in an orange vest with a spade or something digging at the end <laughs> and you've got tens of thousands of cars that have been slowed down and at the end there's one guy digging a hole. I mean, it's obvious. It, it's blatantly obvious what is going on. And I've always said, I, I would say to my wife way back before all of this stuff started, that I think they're trying to deliberately reduce speed limits in the UK on the motorways. And of course, you know, my wife would laugh at the time. She's, you know, think maybe one of my other uh, crazy theories, but actually now we have studies and reports on this that, that show that that is what they have been doing for years. They actually say that is what they have been doing. So I guess the question is, how do you feel about the fact that very soon car ownership will be phased out. That's personal car ownership. Because I'm all for clean air. I mean, I live where I live on this small island. We have very fresh air. I love the fact we don't have a lot of pollution. But at the same time, I know that, well, A, they're trying to force everyone into the C40 cities or the 15 minute cities. But you think about people outside of these big cities that live a lot more rurally, and you think of the income opportunities that, that having a vehicle or a car has provided to people that live rurally, that there are, aren't levels of public transport, there weren't ways to get into a city or another location in order to work. So I know a lot of people rely on a car. So let's have a quick look at all these articles so I can pull all this together for you because it is very, very interesting what is coming up. So yeah, this is where we are now. 95% of us won't be driving our own car in 2030. They've got all these um, you know, studies now to try and encourage people. And of course, we have the United Nations putting out all of their things. So what are they saying? As part of all of their goals, they're saying that we should all consider our travel. Airplanes burn large amounts of fossil fuels, producing significant greenhouse gas emissions. That makes taking fewer flights one of the fastest ways to reduce your environmental impact. When you can meet virtually, take a train or skip that long distance trip altogether. Well, again, this is just more conditioning to get people ready for the 15 minute cities. And we know, because I did a video on it the other week, that now in France, they've actually banned you from taking a domestic flight where a train exists in that area. So this is really where a lot of this started. It was the WEF, goodbye car ownership, hello clean air, welcome to the future of transport. 
so they started all of this really with their articles that they put out and their policy that they pushed out and a lot of other people started to pick up on. Imagine a world where fleets of autonomous vehicles that are electric and shared, we'll talk about shared ownership in a moment, slash the number of vehicles on the road by as much as 90, 90 And then they have all of these sort of maps for how this is going to occur. A P2P marketplace becomes more mature and consumers become more comfortable with ownerless transportations. Some vehicles may own themselves as economically autonomous entities. Now, this is something I definitely want to get into at some point to actually explain what they're talking about, because this is never really going to happen in the way they're talking about it. So they have this phase here. Here's you. Here's your house that you own and you have, you know, you own a car, right? Then they're talking about multiple ownership. So here's you as, you know, a group of four people, and then here's your four houses, and you might own this one car. But what they're talking about in the future is how this car will own itself, not be owned by any individuals at all. And that's what they're talking about when they mention this ownerless transportation system, or even what they refer to as um, 2030, you will own nothing and you will be happy. But just a point to note, I mean, that's Klaus Schwab who, who heads up the WEF. You do realize that he earns a $1 million salary per year from his role and he's worth somewhere in the region of up to $25 million himself. Lives in a very nice house and, uh, you know, he has quite a nice lifestyle, shall we say. So the fact that everybody is eventually going to own nothing and be happy encompasses all parts of society, including the vehicles. But here's the flaw in me having studied all of these policies that they've, they've put out. It's actually not true that these cars and all these other things and the drones and the companies will own themselves because it just doesn't work like that. I just can't see how it's going to happen, how it's going to work. You're always going to have shareholders of these companies someone will always own these companies. These companies are not just going to own themselves. So this whole move towards actually not owning anything is not really true because there will be someone that does own all of this stuff. So it will just be you that don't own them, but someone will and they'll be very, very wealthy from it. So this was from Money Week. In the future, no one will own a car. Here's why and what it means for investors. So we're just seeing this all over the place, all of these articles and why you don't need to own a car anymore. Even in the UK, the BBC had this article, ditch cars to meet climate change, says MPs. People will have to get out of their cars if the UK is to meet its climate change targets. It says the government cannot achieve sufficient emission cuts by swapping existing vehicles for cleaner versions. In its report, the committee said, in the long term, widespread personal vehicle ownership does not appear to be compatible with significant decarbonizations. But MPs are demanding improvements in public transport, walking and cycling, which benefit health as well as the climate. Well, I think that's probably one thing we can all agree on that we want better public transport. Walking is good for us. I know I do it most days. Very good for us, for our health. But this was a few of the articles I mentioned on the speed limits. So if you're not from the UK and you drive down the motorways, this is what you see all the time. You see these, you know, 60 or even 50 or less. But apparently the public wants this. This is what they're saying. And I'm skeptical of a lot of these surveys at the best of times, but this one, um, I definitely smell something when you see the statistics around this. So lowering the motorway speed limit to 60 miles per hour is among the measures supported by the public in an effort to reduce carbon emissions, a new survey has found. According to the survey by conservation charity WWF and think tank Demos, the move to reduce speeds could form part of a raft of measures to cut the UK's carbon emissions that are supported by the public alongside a reduction in meat and dairy consumption and a tax on frequent flyers. You see, this is where my sort of BS detector starts to go off here, that all of a sudden people said the exact things that have been put out by the WEF and the media and 
and everybody else. So they apparently did this 20,000 person survey across a representative cross section of the wider public. Mm, I don't know about this. Using a carbon calculator, the respondents were asked to choose from a range of solutions that would either match or exceed the government's target of cutting Britain's emissions by 39% by 2030. Some 93% supported an improvement to cycling and public transport infrastructure. I can definitely get on board with that. That's why I've put it in green. I do believe that 93% of people said that. Here's where I don't believe it. While the same percentage, so again, 93%, was in favor of a campaign to reduce red meat and dairy consumption by 10% per person. I just don't believe that actually happened. I don't believe they went out into public and said, hi, would you support a reduction in red meat and dairy by 10% per person? You just ask that question of people. I just don't believe that people said that. I think probably what they did was they gave them an option of choices that was a very restrictive survey. They also say four in five. So this is 80% back reducing motorway speed limits. Again, I really don't believe that number at all. I definitely think some people would support it, but 80% supporting speed limits as low as 50 miles per hour. I just don't believe it. Now, there's another very interesting thing that's going on at the moment, and it's called next generation road user charging. This has been kept very, very quiet, but it's, again, it comes into this credit system. You know how we have carbon credits and social credits and all the other things I've been talking about. Well, now this is talking about this journey of how it's going to work. So this time they're talking about mobility credits upon registration. So this is a proposal that's been put into place. And then they're talking about how the platform will calculate the best routes for you as to how you will make your journey. So if you've got a car, well, maybe you can't use the car because the app says that you need to cycle instead. Well, what if you can't cycle? What if you have a disability? What if, you know, there's so much that I just don't think they've thought about here with all of this. And what if you need to take a lot of equipment with you or you can't just take all that heavy stuff on a train? So this is something worth reading about. It's a huge PDF, it's 100 pages long, but it's called the Next Generation Road User Survey. So this is what the report looks like if you wanna find it. Now, the next thing that has been announced is a government ban on diesel lorries by 2040. So they'll be banned in the UK by 2040 at the latest. I just don't see how they're gonna replace HGVs, which are heavy goods vehicles. I just don't see how they're gonna do it because we know that they move forward the ban on petrol and diesel car sales which was gonna be 2035, it's now 2030. And even hybrid cars will be banned from 2035. And they always talk about the transport secretary being on board with all this stuff, but then you hear all the industry groups saying, the transport secretary has absolutely no idea and is clueless about how the roads work and how transport works with diesel and all the other things. I just don't see how he thinks that one of these huge trucks that's pulling tons and tons of weight is going to be powered by, I don't know, what are they thinking, an electric vehicle or something like that. They're struggling just to get enough materials to actually make these cars. So how they're going to convert all of these HGVs as well, I just, I just don't know. I just don't see how they're going to do this. Even the government is targeting 2027. So that's in less, that's three and a half years time to fully convert its 40,000 strong vehicle fleet to zero emissions, as well as their commitment to net zero rail network by 2050 and net zero domestic aviation by 2040. Well, I think we know what they're gonna do on the domestic aviation front because they've done it in France. But even the industry bodies are calling this unrealistic because the refueling infrastructure just isn't there and alternative fuels such as hydrogen just isn't quite there yet. Now, the other thing about all of these fines and charges is have you realized how much money this is bringing in? 14 million pounds in fines over 12 months. That's not the charges, that is just the fines from all of these things like ULEZ, which many of you will be familiar with. And the map is just about to expand. So if you live in London, 
It is getting crazy now, £12.50 per day, I believe, for cars. So it's obvious they're trying to get you out of your car. If you go to work four days a week, that's £50 right there just in the charge, the ULEZ charge for driving your car in London. And then we just had this article come out which talks about UK drivers complaining as car insurance renewal costs rise up to 70%. Yes, you did see that right, 70%. Car insurance is the latest household bill to go through the roof with angry motorists complaining that prices are shooting up by as much as 70% when their policy comes up for renewal. The ONS showed a new source of financial pain with the price of car insurance up 43.1% in the last 12 months. Now you might say, well, why? Why are these prices going up? Well, if you look at the reasons, it doesn't equate to 43 to 70%. They're saying spare parts, microchips, semiconductors are more expensive than before. And if they take longer to arrive, then it extends the time claimants need a courtesy car for. And this was the motorway speed limit. This was an experiment they did, and it was only supposed to last for a short while. But actually, here we go, it was supposed to last between 12 and 15 months, but it's now gone on for more than two years. And despite being asked when it's going to end, no one seems to know. So it could be that this is gonna be left in place indefinitely. But not just that, MPs are now considering a 64 mile per hour national speed limit. How on earth are you gonna get exactly 64 miles per hour? That is uh, gonna be an interesting one. And Sunday car bans. So banning you from driving your car on a Sunday in order to meet all of these targets. Not just that, there's a lot of new reports and proposals out. So this is one of them. They want to charge you as a owner of a private vehicle. They wanna charge you on a per mile basis. So on the amount that you've traveled, so the distance traveled, the vehicle emissions that you made in that time, local levels of congestion and pollution, and the availability of public transport alternatives. This is getting crazy, my friends. And this is why I keep saying that they are trying to force everybody into these 15 minute cities, which is this that I talked about and did a video on before, the C40 cities. So if you're wondering why things are going on in your area, you just need to look on this map. There we go, there is London, right there. There is Paris, there is Oslo, there is Rotterdam. All you need to do is just look on this chart and it will explain why you're seeing the things that you are seeing in your area. And it will show you a, a huge list of all the cities. It will show you even US if you wanna know if your city's on here which is gonna be a C40 city, you can find it on here. But then lastly then, here's another nefarious thing they are doing, and that is that data is becoming the industry's new fuel. So what does this mean then? Well, how is it you think that they keep talking about how car journeys in, in car sharing is gonna be a tiny fraction of the cost in the future than it is today? Well, if you think about how search engines like Google and and other things like this work in social media that's free. It's only free because they are collecting your data and they're making a lot of profit off that data. Well, that is what they're gonna put into these electric vehicles in, in the future. It's going to be collecting data points all the time and that is how they're gonna enable these costs to come down. But remember, if you do live in one of these 15 minute cities, I don't and I never would live in one of these cities. I just love my freedom and nature and you know nice walks and all of that far too much to live in one of these cities. But I do believe it's going to become more and more restrictive as time goes by. But we can talk more about that on another video. Today, I really just wanted to bring your attention to what is happening with private vehicle ownership and how it is being phased out. But I think it's mainly gonna be phased out in the big cities. So if you live in a big city, then this will affect you. If you don't, you live a lot more rurally, then you don't really need to worry about this as much because it will take a lot longer before this actually impacts you. So thank you so much for watching and being a subscriber here. Take care, God bless, I will see you tomorrow.